So in this video, we will solve this example Buckingham Pie method problem. So in our problem statement, it says that drag force is a function of viscosity, velocity, density, diameter, sphere for a fluid flow problem. We want to determine the number of pi groups. And so let's get started. So first, let's write the equation. It says drag force is a function of. That means we can say that F a d drag force is equal to function f parentheses uh, what's inside we have uh, viscosity we have velocity we have density and we have diameter of sphere so next let's write the dimensions of each of these variables including uh, drag force so drag force is equal to the dimensions um, it's going to be mass times length divided by t uh, squared, times squared. Next, we have viscosity. Uh, viscosity, the dimensions are, uh, we have mass divided by length times time. Next, we have velocity. Velocity is equal to, the dimensions are, length divided by time. Now we have density. Density, the dimensions are uh, mass over length cubed. And finally, we have uh, diameter, which is simply just length, so L. And now we'll read our reference. So rules for using Buckingham Pi method. So first, we need to count how many variables that we have, and we call it M. So let's do that. How many variables that we, we have? We have drag force, which is one. We have viscosity, which is two. Velocity, three. Uh, density, four. And diameter, five. So we say that M is equal to five. Next, count how many dimensionless quantities that we have, which we just focus on these stuff. Mass, length, time. So we have three. So N is equal to three. So now we need to know how many number of pi groups that we need to solve for and that's going to be m minus n so we say 5 minus 3 and we get 2 so we will solve for two pi groups however let's say this number was 6 it would be 6 minus 3 so we would solve for three pi groups pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 but in our case we have two and so that's going to be pi 1 and pi 2 so next we need to select the repeating variables and how many repeating variables that we will have? It's going to be three. It's going to be whatever we have for n. In order to select our three repeating variables, we can only choose from these groups of four. This cannot be a repeating variable, only the inside terms. So we could choose from viscosity, velocity, density, and diameter. But there are some rules. Um, repeating variables cannot be dimensionless. It can be unitless. Um, it can be like a unitless number like this. Next, no two repeating variables can have the same overall dimensions. For example, if we had uh, length, um, if we had radius of a pipe and height of a pipe, both of these terms are still just length. So that cannot be a repeating variable. Um, for fluid uh, mechanics, typical repeaters are density, velocity, diameter, and like these three. So let's see, do we have any of these three combinations? And so let's select our three repeaters. Um, we have density, velocity, and diameter as a good choice for fluid mechanics. Do we have that? We have density, we have velocity, and we have diameter. So that will be our three repeating uh, variables. So let's write that down. We have to say pick uh, repeaters. And we chose uh, density, uh, diameter, and velocity. And so let's get started. So we will solve for pi 1 and pi 2. Pi 1 is equal to, we chose these three as our repeaters. So we can call it density raised to x times d raised to y times uh, v raised to z. And our fourth term will not be a repeater, but will be one of the unknown uh, variables. We have two of them. Fd is 1. And also viscosity is the other term. Typically, we choose pi 1 to be this term. 
So now we say is equal to, now our dimensions. Earlier we said that density was equal to mass divided by length cubed. I could say math times length raised to negative three because that's the same thing, mass over length cubed. Um, raised to x times d. We know d was just length uh, raised to y times uh, velocity. Velocity is length over time, so length times t raised to negative one. That's gonna be z. And finally, fd, which is a uh, drag force. We had mass times length times times over negative two. Now we will choose our three dimensionless quantities, which was mass, length, and time. So we say M, L, and T. And now we're just gonna group. Now where are all the M's that we have? This is one and this is two. Um, for this one, it's raised to X, so we just say X. This one, we don't have a variable because it's not a repeater, and so we just say plus one because we have M raised to one. And we will say that this is equal to zero. Next, we do length. So we have L raised to negative three. And so we say negative three X plus, we have Y plus Z. They all have one, because this is raised to negative three. That's why, that's why we said negative three X. And here we have a one here. So we say plus one is equal to zero. Now we do time. This is one, this is two. So we have negative z minus two is equal to zero. And now we want to solve for x, y, and z. So this one quickly, we can see that x will equal negative one because I can say minus one, minus one. And so x would equal negative one. Next, another easy one is z. So in this case, z would equal negative two. z is equal to negative two because z minus two, so if we want to equal zero, minus minus, be positive, so two minus two is zero. Next, we simply plug in our x and z value here, so negative three times negative one is three, uh, z is negative two, and we would ultimately get that y is equal to negative two. And so we can say that pi one is equal to, um, this was fd, so we have fd will always be in the numerator because it has no variable on top. It's simply FD raised to one. So it's always going to be on top. Divided by, so density raised to X. What is X? X is raised to negative one. So we go into the denominator times D. D raised to Y. Y was negative two. So we say times D squared. And finally Z. Z is also raised to negative two. And z corresponds to this term right here, so v. So we get v squared. So now we can check, is this a dimensionless quantity? Which it must. So we have fd. fd, the uh, units was mass times length times time raised to negative two divided by density. Density was mass times length raised to negative three times d squared. d is length, length squared times v squared, so we would have length squared times t raised to negative two. So now let's check our units, because for pi groups, it must be dimensionless. After you correctly solve for these terms, it will always be dimensionless. So mass over mass cancels, so that's one. Um, this is l raised to two times l raised to two, so we get l raised to four times l raised to negative three, and so if you combine these three terms, you get we would get four minus three, which is positive one. So L raised to one, like here, this is also one. So that would give us uh, one, so that cancels. Finally, T raised to negative two divided by T raised to negative two would also cancel and we would get one. So this is equal to one, it's dimensionless. So this is our first pi one term. We have, we need to solve for pi two also. So let's do that. And so for pi two, we solve for this term here. We know that V uh, density and D are our repeater, so we don't need to solve for it. So the only term that we need to solve for is gonna be this term right here, which is viscosity. So it's the same exact method. It's gonna be pi two is equal to our three repeaters. We have density raised to X times 
d raised to y times v raised to z times our non-repeater, which is viscosity now. Um, so let's do that. So like what we did last time, we say the dimensions of density, which was mass times length raised to negative 3. Um, it's going to be raised to x times d. d was length raised to y times uh, v, which is velocity. So length times time raised to negative 1. Uh, raised to z, and finally our viscosity term, which would be mass times length raised to negative 1 times time raised to negative 1. So now we need to do the exact same thing. We saw for mass, length, and time. So mass, length, and time, and we simply group. So mass was x for this one, plus 1 again. So mass plus 1 is equal to 0. Length is negative 3x plus y plus z. So negative 3x plus y plus z. And then minus 1, because we have a minus 1 here. Minus 1 is equal to 0. And finally, t. So we have negative z, uh, and we have a minus 1, is equal to 0. So we now need to solve for x. Um, x would equal negative 1. Because negative 1 plus 1 is 0, we do z. Uh, z would equal uh, negative 1. And finally, we do y. So we plug in negative 1 for x, negative 1 for z, and then y would become uh, simply negative 1. And so we say that pi 2 is equal to... So the term that we're solving for is viscosity. That's always going to be 1 because... This is raised to 1, and this term right here is viscosity. So it's going to be viscosity over, now what we solve for, x was negative 1, y was negative 1, and z was negative 1. So density will be in the denominator, uh, d will be in the denominator, velocity will also be in the de denominator. And so we would get density times d times v. And we box in this. This is our uh, pi 2 term. And likewise, we, let's check the units because we know our pi terms must be dimensionless. And so if it's not, we must have made a mistake early on. So let's check. So viscosity, the units is mass times length raised to negative 1 times time raised to negative 1. Density, we have mass, mass times length raised to negative 3 times diameter, which is L, times velocity which is l times time raised to negative one this is velocity this is d and this is density now let's check are we unitless mass cancels uh times cancel and we have l raised to negative three times l squared which is l raised to negative one divided by l raised to negative one so that cancels and so we have one and so it's dimensionless and so we are correct and finally we write the answer down so we have pi 1 is equal to f, our function, parentheses, pi 2. And if we want, we can replace pi 1 with what we had. So pi 1 was fd over density times d squared times v squared is equal to a function, pi 2, which we have uh, viscosity divided by density times diameter times velocity. And we can box in this answer. Now, let's say, for example, we had more than two pi terms. Because in our case, we had five variables and three primary dimensions. And so we had two. And that's why we solved for pi 1 and pi 2. But if we had, say, six variables and the same thing, we would solve for three pi groups. So we would get, like, pi 1 is equal to function pi 2 comma pi 3. And just to recap... And just to recap for our problem, that's all we need to do to solve for Buckingham Pi method.